Okay, in this video we'll take a look at the derivatives of the inverse trig functions, but before we get started on the nose, let's just give you a reminder of uh, the derivatives of the six original trig functions. So if you had the derivative of the sine, remember, is the cosine, uh, the derivative of the tangent is the secant squared, and these are ones that we've done earlier in the course. So now what we're going to look at is the derivatives of the inverse. So if the derivative of the sine is the cosine, then what is the derivative of the inverse sine of x? Now, just a little bit on notation before we get started. Um, let's take a quick look at this. Uh, it depends on which book you're using or um, what you've had in the past, but the notation I'm going to use is the inverse sine with the little negative 1 up here. But again, just a reminder, some books do this. They will have the derivative uh, with respect to x, and then in place of inverse sine, they'll use the arc sine. So the arc sine of x. And then we'll close the parentheses here. So just remember, they're, they're exactly the same thing. So uh, whether you use the inverse sine or the arc sine, you'll get the same thing. Now the same thing would be true of the tangent. If you have, uh, you can either use the inverse tangent, or if you prefer, um, that would be the same thing as the arc tangent of x. So some books use uh, arc sine, arc tangent. Some books use inverse sine, inverse tangent. The choice is yours. I'll use this in this video right here, but just whichever one you're comfortable with, you guys can go ahead and use. Okay, let's take a quick look at the rules. Now, <clears throat> the formulas that we'll use are actually pretty easy to use. Um, it starts out with this. Now, we won't derive these formulas in this video. I'll just show you how to use them. So the derivative of the inverse sine of u is equal to u prime divided by 1 minus u squared. Uh, the derivative of the tangent of u, u prime times 1 plus u squared, and so on. Uh, and you've got the seek. Now, on this side, you've got inverse cosine, inverse cotangent, and inverse cosec. Now, one thing to notice about them, um, the formulas, the three formulas on the left are exactly the same thing as the three formulas on the right, except for these negatives. So if you look at the sine, uh, here's the derivative of the inverse sine. The derivative of the inverse cosine is exactly the same formula, except for that little negative right there. Um, the derivative of the tangent and the cotangent are exactly the same, except for that little negative right there. And the same thing is true with the secant. So the derivative of the sec inverse secant and inverse cosecant, same thing except for this little negative. So I think we'll kind of highlight them in red here just to remind you. They're exactly the same formulas, except for these little negatives right here um, are the only difference. So really, rather than having to memorize six formulas, you can generally get by with memorizing these three, and then you'll just have to attach a negative with that. So with that in mind, let's try a couple of examples here. Okay, now the first example looks like this. We want to find if y is equal to the inverse sine of 3x, then what is the derivative of this equal to? Now, in this formula, we'll uh, do this. We're going to assume that u, this part right here, this is going to be u. So u will be what's inside the parentheses. And sometimes it's a simple x, sometimes it's something more complicated than a simple x. But my suggestion when you work these problems out, let's go back to the interval. So what we want to find is the inverse sine. So let's look at the formulas. <laughs> and the formula for the derivative of the inverse sine, it's u prime uh, divided by the square root of 1 minus u prime. So we'll go ahead and write that down. So u squared uh, divided by the square root of 1 minus, or u prime divided by the square root of 1 minus u squared. So what y prime is going to be, um, y prime would be equal to uh, u prime divided by the square root of 1 <coughs> minus u squared. So you've got the formula. Now if you look at the formula, you really are going to wind up needing three things. You're going to need u, you're going to need u prime, and you're going to need u squared. So my suggestion would be on every problem is go ahead and find those. So I'll start out let u be equal to 3x, so I know what u is. Now I'm going to need u prime, so u prime would be the derivative of this, which would be 3. 
And then finally, you're going to need u squared. So figure out what u squared is. So if u is 3x and you square it, then square the 3 and square the x, you'd have 9x squared. So now you've got the three things that you know. And what that does, that just makes it easier to plug them in the formula. So y prime would be equal to, and here's the, we'll put the line across. First of all, you need u prime in the top, and that's equal to 3. Then you need the square root of 1 minus u squared, and u squared is equal to 9x squared, and u are done. So some of these are pretty easy. It's just really a matter of plugging them into the formula. Okay, so with that in mind, let's take a look at the next problem. Each one will be a little bit different. Now what this one's going to be is um, y is equal to the inverse cotangent of this. Well, the first thing to do is, again, I'll let uh, u be equal to what's on the inside of the parentheses. So that's going to be my choice of u. Now, I need the inverse cotangent formula. So let's go back and take a quick look at the formulas. And you want inverse cotangent, which is minus u prime divided by 1 plus u squared. So we'll try that. So y prime is going to be equal to negative of u prime divided by 1 plus u squared. So that's going to be the formula. Now we'll do exactly what we did in that last one, is you're going to need three things. You're going to need u, you're going to need u prime, you're going to need u squared, so let's go ahead and find those. So first of all, I'll come over here and let's say u. u would be equal to 4 times x squared. Then you're going to need the derivative of u, so u prime. The derivative of this using the power rule would be 8x. And then finally, you're going to need u squared, so you might as well go ahead and find that right over here. So u squared would be equal to, and take 4x squared and square it, and square the 4 and you get 16, um, square the x squared and you get x to the fourth power. So there's u squared. And now it's just a matter of plugging that <clears throat> into the formula. So the derivative would be, it's the negative of u prime, which is 8x. So we've got 8x divided by um, 1 plus u squared. And u squared is 16x to the fourth power. And you're done. You've got it. <clears throat> so again, fairly simple, just a matter of basically getting it in the formula and finding out what u, u prime, and u squared are. Now let's try a couple more. Okay, this one's going to be this. y is equal to, this time, the uh, derivative of the inverse cosine of the square root of x. So just like we've done on the other ones, um, we'll begin by letting u be equal to the square root of x. And then the formula goes, let's take a look at the formula on this one. So we want the inverse cosine. And the inverse cosine, it's the negative of u prime times the square root of 1 minus u squared. So we'll use that. So on this one, we want y prime will be equal to the negative of u prime divided by the square root of 1 minus u squared. So those are the things that you're going to need. Okay, now again we'll do just like we've done before. We'll come over here and we'll find <coughs> u, u prime, and u squared. So u is going to be equal to the square root of x, but just a reminder that's equal to x to the one-half power. Then you'll need the derivative of that. So u prime would be equal to the square root of this, which would be 1 half of x, and then using the power rule, take away 1 to the negative 1 half power. And then finally, you're going to need u squared. So that's going to be the square root of x squared. And when you square the square root of x, you get an x. So there is u, u prime, and u squared. Now it's just a matter of plugging those three into the formula. So we'll go y prime will be equal to 
uh, the negative of, and again, in place of u prime, put what it's equal to, which would be 1 half of x to the negative 1 half divided by, then you've got the square root of um, 1 minus u squared, which is just um, uh, an x. So you've just got an x right here. Okay, now it's just made on this one. You can occasionally simplify them just a little bit. So let's just go ahead and simplify this one. So what you've got, you, first of all, you've got a negative in the top. So we've got a negative. Here's we'll just put the line across here. So you've got a negative up in the top. Now, multiplying by one half, we can take this one half and move it to the bottom and put a two right there. Also, you've got x to the negative one half power. You can move that to the bottom and make it be x to the positive one half power. And then finally, you've got the square root of 1 minus x. So you've got the square root of 1 minus x. And the only thing that's left in the top now is a 1. So it'll wind up looking like that right there. So there is um, the derivative of the inverse cosine of the square root of x. And we'll try a couple more. Okay, now it could have e raised to a certain function. There could be some variations on these. So again, this one's going to involve uh, inverse secant. And again, our choice of u will be what's inside the parentheses. So I'll put uh, choice of u right here. There's my u. And this time the formula will be, uh, you want the inverse secant formula. So it's u prime divided by the absolute value of u times the square root of u squared minus one. So uh, we'll go ahead and use that. <clears throat> and we'll get u prime, or y prime, would be equal to, now again, it's u prime divided by the absolute value of u times the square root of u squared minus 1. So there's the formula. And again, you'll need u, u prime, and u squared. So just like on those other problems, let's go ahead and find those. So first of all, I need u, and u is equal to e to the 3x. Now you'll need the derivative of that. So u prime would be equal to the derivative of this. Now just a reminder, if you have u raised to a certain power, the derivative of this, it's the original e function times the derivative of its exponent. So the answer would be it's the original e function times the derivative of its exponent. Then we'll go ahead and move that 3 out in front. So this will turn into 3 times e to the 3x. And then finally, you're going to need u squared. So what u squared would be would be e to the 3x quantity squared. And whenever you raise a power to a power, you just multiply. So this will turn into e to the 6x. So now again, you've got u, you've got u prime, and you've got u squared. So let's go ahead and just stick that in the formula. So y prime would be equal to, first of all, u prime. And u prime is 3e to the 3x. Then you've got the absolute value of u, and u is e to the 3x. Then times the square root of u squared, and u squared would be e to the 6x, um, minus 1. And <clears throat> you've got one more thing you can do here on this one. Um, <clears throat> the absolute value of e to the 3x. Um, will be positive. This one's positive. So in this problem, these two will actually cancel out. So this e to the 3x here cancels out this e to the 3x here. And what that will leave you with would be 3 over the square root of uh, e to the 6x minus 1, and u would be finished. So again, if you get a chance to simplify things, you can go ahead and simplify and let's try one more, just to show you one more u substitution on these. It involves u. Okay, again, now following exactly the same logic, 
um, uh, what's inside the parentheses will be our u. And this one's going to be inverse tangent. So let's take a look at the formulas. <clears throat> and the formula for inverse tangent would be u prime over 1 plus u squared. So we use that. So what we want is y prime <clears throat> would be equal to u prime over <clears throat> 1 plus u squared. Now we'll do exactly the same thing that we've done in the previous ones. So let's go ahead and find u, u prime, and u squared. So what u is, u is going to be equal to, in this case, it's the square root of 3x minus 1. But again, I'll write that in fractional exponents. So that's going to be 3x minus 1 to the 1 half power. Now you want u prime. And when you do u prime, now you're going to have to use the chain rule in this because you've got a composite function. So what the chain rule says, remember, it's the derivative of the outer function, and then take away 1 to the negative 1 half. Then you rewrite the inner part, then times the derivative of the inner function, which is a 3. So you can move this 3 out in front. So that's the derivative of u using the chain rule. Now take this 3, move it out in front, you can rewrite it as 3 halves times 3x minus 1 to the negative 1 half. So there's u prime. Now the next thing you're going to need, you're going to need u squared. So let's go ahead and find that. It would be the square root of 3x minus 1 squared. So just take u and square it. Now, whenever you square it, the square and the square root cancel out and just leave you with 3x minus 1. So now you've got u, you've got u prime, you've got u squared. Now it's just a matter of plugging them into the formula. So let's try that. So using the formula, you've got u prime, which is this. It's 3 halves of 3x minus 1 to the minus 1 half power. Then you've got 1 plus, and in place of u squared, put what it's equal to. So it's equal to 3x minus 1. Now, if you can simplify it, let's go ahead and simplify it just a little bit. Okay, now I think I'll do it like this. Let's go ahead and do this. Now, first of all, notice uh, the plus 1 and the minus 1 cancel out. So this one cancels out, and this one cancels out. You just leave with a 3x in the bottom. So in the top, you've got this 3. <clears throat> so you've got a 3 here. Now the 2, you can go ahead and move to the bottom. <clears throat> now this is 3x minus 1 to the negative 1 half power. So we'll move it to the bottom and make it be 3x minus 1 to the plus 1 half power. And then finally, you've got this 3 times 3x right here. And you can take it one more step. In this case, the threes will cancel out. So you've got a three here and a three here. Those will cancel out. So that one cancels out that one. <clears throat> and you can write the final answer as, on the top, everything canceled out, so you can leave a one. Then you've got a two. Um, take this x and move it out in front. And then you've got this thing to the one-half power, and you can either leave it to the one-half power or change it back into a square root. It's your choice. To the one-half. So there's going to be the answer. So just be aware of the fact that if you just use this little technique in all these problems, you need u, you need u prime, and you need u squared. So if you go ahead and just find those first, there's u, um, there's u prime, and there's u squared, then it's just a matter of plugging them into the formula you've got. So they're really not that bad. We'll take one last look at the formula. And again, just a reminder on this, uh, the only difference between the ones on the right and the ones on the left are those negatives. So we'll kind of highlight that just for a second. All the ones on the right are just the negatives of the ones on the left. So there's a look at inverse trig function derivative.